three, two, one, and we're on. Look at you, sunky girl. <laughs> got my little, my little pen that Why? we got out in LA. Why though? It expands the mind. <coughs> Is that what it is? Let me have it. I'll probably stack it in there. We got one of these um, like CBD pens out in um, LA. Victor awesome. got it for us. Yeah, Victor got it. Thank you, Vic. Uh, Vic Strong on Instagram. Follow him. Um, boyfriend of Mel. Husband. Husband? Yeah, they're married. Hmm. It's the same surname. They're awesome. They are awesome. Mel's and one of my favourites. Mel trains... Um, Kim Kardashian. The big butt. Get her to go with a stick and poke it and tell us, because I don't think any of that shit's real I'm back sure there. she's probably allowed to touch it all she wants. I just... Sh- it's fat. It's, it's not real. No, I mean, like, it's fat. It's, it's, it <clears throat> is real, but it's just that they've re- they've literally sucked fat out of some place and put it back in. It's surgical, though, huh? Yeah. Definitely. Like, 100%. It, yeah. De- no two ways like, about it. No. Nobody, nobody has a butt like that. No. And, like, Kim, I don't think, probably even squatted before she met Mel. No, Mel's in crazy shape. Oh, Mel's going to be over for England uh, thing as well, isn't she? Yeah, so if anyone's coming to Lift Brom, uh, Mel will be there. And she, no, she's really, like, for someone who, like, is affiliated with the Kardashians and whatever you say about that and whatever you think about the Kardashians, um, Mel is her own person. and is She is so, so shit cool. I love her. And I'm really looking forward to seeing her again. She's probably one of my favourite people. So yeah, so the people on that one. Um, so updates before we start and roll into this podcast, which Lainey has a cool little topic for. Um, also, I just put out a tweet, so I'll check my tweets as well, see what you guys are sending in. I said you've got 45 minutes to do it, so we'll go through some of those towards the end as well. Um, what was I saying? I don't know. What were you saying? You were saying about what we're going to talk about. Today. Oh yeah, updates on that. So, hashtag lift brum is uh, being used by Gymshark, and it is to do with the fact... Let's let's just clear up this confusion. Yeah. We are in Birmingham on the Body Power weekend, but we are not at Body Power. Yeah. We're at a completely independent Gymshark pop-up event. Yeah. Yeah. So we will be there the weekend of Body Power, yeah. but we're at a pop-up event in a different location. It is free to come and see us. Yeah. The, hopefully, the, if you've looked at these pop-up stores in the past, there's been huge queues. Hopefully, that's been resolved because they're having it in a much, much larger space. Yeah. And the idea of it is more that everyone can fill into the building and then meet people within the building yeah. rather than queuing around the outside. Yeah, so you'll still be able to kind of enjoy the event. And obviously, there will still be queues for the athletes, but yeah. it'll be you won't be standing outside bored out of your mind. You'll be able to kind of like queue inside or go shopping or if the athlete you're wanting to meet isn't there because obviously, we all have time slots. Do you know, slots. I don't know... I know my more? my time. It, I know it's on. Is it ten till six? Nine till six? Ten till six on the Saturday, and I think ten till five on the Sunday. We are on in the morning. Well, I'm on in the morning on the I'm Saturday. S- right. I don't know. I, I presume yet. Lex is on at the same time as me. You don't know though. They might be doing girl boy splits. We're not entirely I don't know. sure. But I'm um, I'm on in the morning. Um, ten till two on the uh, Saturday, and then the afternoon two till five on the Sunday. Okay, but that's what you need to know. So if you're going to the Body Power Weekend, have a look around on um, all our athlete pages and gym shop themselves around close to the time to find out exactly where we're going to be, what times we're going to be on. And just, you know, when you're done with the Body Power or you don't go to the Body Power in the morning, go in the afternoon, come see us in the morning, whatever works for you. But with that, it's free. It's no extra money for you. You, just, you might be going to Body Power on the Friday and decide you want a break from it on the Saturday, go to Lift Brom on Saturday, go back to Body Power on Sunday, yeah. something like that. You know, because like it is us. on two days. Or just come and see us because we're fucking cool enough. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to have like people. I, I I suppose I don't push myself enough at these events, but um, I'm going to be there, and I'd really like it if some of my girls came along to see me. Oh yeah, this is our big one, guys. Yeah, this is the UK. The only time really there's a going to be these big UK events. Yeah, and this is the one. Plus, this is probably going to be the biggest one they've done of the pop up so mm-hmm. far by a long stretch. This is on their home turf. This is home like. turf, so they're going to go big. So if you're going to come to any of them, yeah. come to this one. If you're flying over. To come and do the Body Power Weekend, definitely come and say hello. The come Australian get a free one, they had like food and coffees and stuff on the go. So this God is, knows what they're going to have on the go. We don't know big. any of the intricate details, but they uh-uh. definitely will pull out all the stops because it's Gymshark and they know how to treat their customers and they know how to treat their athletes. So I, I'm really looking forward to the weekend because right. they've already got stuff planned for us and I'm like, ooh. 
stuff. Yeah, they make a good because because yeah. it's a local area. They they can always get hookups of cool shit for us to do. So yeah, yeah, looking forward to that. So that's that's big news there. So that's eleventh and twelfth of May, the weekend, the eleventh and twelfth. We'll be in Birmingham from midweek that week, doing all sorts of God knows what. So we'll we'll be uh, putting up stories. Um, so yeah, get p- prepared for a good weekend on that one, full of content and cool yeah. shit and you can actually come and see us and I would advise coming and see people at these events because it gives don't you perspective don't be scared off by the queues because the queues even though like it'll have massive queues to get like when you looked at the stores that it looked like there was massive queues to get into the place as we said you'll be able to get in and then it'll be queues for the individual athletes so don't put off if you're coming to see me or Lex by a huge queue that might actually be for Whitney or Steve or something yeah. so like obviously we'll have our queues as well but um, don't be put off because we, we do we, we always make an effort to even like if we're running short in time just run down the queue say hello to everyone and yeah. try and get time in with everyone so yeah you will get regardless we will yeah. we will find you and we will hug you yeah <laughs> and so that's one big news second one I have finished my depletion phase of my seven day transformation which is actually another reason I have this this pen with me because it helps increase appetite and my appetite has definitely windled over the last oh, five days. Why are you on a higher day then today? Now I'm on my two load days. So I did an extra day depletion because... I thought that, you said low days. Okay. Load so days. if you're not watching the seven-day transformation series, um, I'm basically showing what you can achieve when the body is kind of a little bit out of shape to pulling it back into shape and going past that in just a single seven-day period, how quick it is to bring things back in line. Yeah. Basically, it's, a, it's a, a thing of I'm sick and tired of people thinking it takes magic and pills and supplements and yeah. all this nonsense of drugs and whatnot that just constantly gets thrown around and I want to prove a point of what you can do in seven days because that at least then it's also makes... It's the difference makes, like a, of well, a peak week, week, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a peak week for a show but it's also to, to prove that like no drug or supplement or anything you can take works in seven days, does it? No. it nothing's going to kick in that quick. So it helps me go... It helps me prove that it's nothing to do with anything else other than diet, training and manipulation of the biology of the body. So I've, I've done my depletion days. I did an extra depletion day. So it's a seven day period. The idea was going to be do one day of um, standard macros, bring the body to a level, then drop into four days of depletion, one extra day of depletion than normal because the body does normally work on a three day deplete, two day load. But that's only true if you are already coming in off a controlled diet so i did an extra extra day depletion which wasn't really depletion it was probably more pulling the body back in from that overhaul yeah, that we had yeah. after your show where we ate a lot well, like of even i'm meant to be back chocolate. up to maintenance today and yesterday i said i wasn't going to hit my maintenance because i ate a lot the day before and i need to so just, just balance but, it yeah just yeah. i just reined it back in yesterday and then t- now today i'm back to my maintenance for the week so that's it so i did my four days but one of those days the fourth day was your sneaky little show that you did that was a local one that we did yeah. because we like the people who run the show um it's a and nice venue good event and it was close to home it's close to home Less anyone to get a feet wet with it just to see for maybe in the future and it yeah. is it was a really nice show but we'll get onto that after yeah. so that was the fourth day and because it kind of messed up because normally what laney does is has lunch midway through the day where i get something to eat but we didn't have that luxury at this one um just because of timing for the day and things I had to get done so i was literally on midway yeah through you the were day. on midway through the day so i actually missed an entire afternoon of being able to eat so then we went to turtle bay I had a massive feed there, but what it did was kind of knock me off a little bit on terms of it being consistent. So I thought, you know what, throw a fifth day in of depletion because once you're depleted, you can't get any more depleted. Yeah. So I just threw in a fifth day of, again, that consistent macro yeah. just, to, just to prove it, just to keep it, you know, get that variable, kick that variable out from the final day. So we're back now. So the, basically it's actually turned out okay because I now have done my depletion phase. So now it's a two day loading phase before doing the physique reveal. But we're all going away tomorrow yeah. to Turkey as a um, a gift to late for Lenny's birthday, so we're going to all inclusive proper holiday. It's not a it's not really a work retreat. Um, so we're going to be being normal, love, holidaying, lazy human beings. As lazy as we get, we always stay active. Yeah, there's a gym there and stuff. So, so I plan on like worked out that the first day we're there kind of is the end of my load period, mm. and so it's pretty. So it'll, I'll be able to show you guys how you can go on holiday. And then kind of, if you're doing this kind of peaking for a holiday, if you're not doing it for the show, like I've said in the videos, you can tailor it a little bit more. I'll show you how I'll do that going through airport travel, getting to the hotel, eating and all that, and how I still monitor things. Yeah. And then do the well, physique we've reveal. Planned. We've got an early start tomorrow. We get to the airport, check in. Oh, we've checked in, just drop the bags and then go Off through the and, and get some nice food before we get on the flight. Have yeah. some snacks for on the flight. And yeah. Just pick sensible things. I'll yeah. do that. I'll keep going, follow the load through and then... I will show you the reveal, hopefully under the sun of the Turkish coastline. It's the Caribbean Sea, is it? That one that we're on? 
No. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's part of something. It's part of one of the seas. The Mediterranean. That's one, not the Caribbean. Yeah, Mediterranean. I was like, yeah, you're way My off there. My so bad. Is it not the Indian Ocean, no? It's Either actually. way, it's one of the, like, hotty totty beach lines. So, it should be lovely. It should be warm, anyway. Yeah. The forecast oh. is good. And it's meant to be a kick-ass hotel as well. It's supposed to have really good food, lots of nice facilities. Yeah. Like, there's, like, not just, like, one kind of main place to eat. There's, like, a number of restaurants Oh, yeah, there's, like, specialised restaurants. It's one of those where there's, like, five restaurants on site and Mexican and Thai. Um, There's loads of pools. There's a spa there. Um, It's supposed to have a decent enough gym, which is hopefully... We we always train when we're away, always. If we're away for a week, we'll do at least three days training, won't we? We keep it in. It makes us feel good. We wake up in the morning, it's sunny, it's warm. I've got training clothes with me. I usually, because I wake before Lex... Does anyone else have this thing where you're on a different schedule, like sleep schedule to your husband or partner or wife, whatever? Um, because me and Lex, we literally are on different, like it's like we're in different time zones. Yeah. Because I'm like an early person. I like to get up at like Your eight circadian and... rhythm, it's called, isn't it? Okay. Is that right? Circadian rhythm? I don't know. Yeah. You've I've... read more about it because I right. worry about Lex. And no, so I have always been. This is actually been good the subject entire, to talk yeah, about. Yeah, that's why I just caught that nip. Yeah, you I think tell them what your schedule right, okay. is and so, I'll tell them mine. I... Ever since I've been a child, yeah. e- like never, ever, ever been able to wake up easily. Ever. Ne- Do you know the one? This is how infrequently I wake up awake. I remember the one time it happened. I remember it. I remember it to this day. It was in the converted barn my mum used to live in. It was a school day. I think it was a Thursday. And I woke up. I used to have my one of those old alarms that you'd set to wake you up for the radio. Yeah. And I had it tuned to radio. And so it comes straight on and it came on and it was that wake up, it's a beautiful morning song. Yeah. Da, da, it's a beautiful morning. Yeah, that one. And I literally, that kicked in, woke me up. Don't know whether it was a song, whether I just had a really great night's sleep. I literally, covers off. Whoosh, and I was one of those kids who used to get changed under the covers. You know, if it was cold, I would bring my uniform under the covers. I and went get, through yeah. a phase of actually wearing my uniform to bed so that I could just get up in the oh, morning. Oh, you're such a weirdo. I you used did- to lie like this as well, like, as, like not... On top of the covers because I didn't want to crease my uniform, so I lie like this. Didn't know this before we married you. No, this all comes out after. I, I didn't do it a lot. So my mum <laughs> caught me and was like, "No, you're not allowed to wear your uniform to bed." <laughs> you're such a because I just felt like I always like to be early for things. So I thought like, "Oh, this will make me on time." You know, Ch- children's yeah. brains are some of the best in the world. We should yeah. study them more. They have so they're so funny. Okay, so we're back so, to yes, you. So yes, bounced out of bed. Does not get up. Wake in the up. It's beautiful. Yeah, bounced out of bed and just boomf into the day. And it's the one time I remember that happening. Yeah, but what's your normal schedule? So normally is like I will feel a little bit tired around about half 11, 12 o'clock. Normal time. Normal time that people do. I forget about it for ten minutes and then I can stay up until the sun comes up. Yeah. No problem whatsoever. If I don't go to bed immediately under that tired feeling. I can be up till seven, eight in the morning, no problem. Yeah. Stay up all night. And I've always been like that. Whenever I went to sleepovers as a kid, everyone else crashed out. I was the only kid always left awake like, pussies, come on, let's put another movie on. You know, yeah. and it, used to be, it used to annoy me. Like, How are you all asleep? Why are you tired? And I always thought like that. And but then, then waking up in the morning is terrible. So you're definitely a night owl. So I'm a night owl, but this and is And how does thing. this affect your life? Just generally, so, I'm just asking. Okay. So I always end up... Waking up later, yeah, be- because obviously I end up going to sleep late, but I still need at least seven hours sleep, yeah. really eight. So I'll always I end up waking up late, not late, late, late. Like I, I wake up now, like what? You're nine, a bit better. Half, nine, it used half, to be nine. like midday, like literally. If I left him sleep, it'd be midday, one o'clock. I'm a deep sleeper as well yeah. when I do go to sleep, but it takes me He's fucking like ages to get to sleep as well. Yeah. Fucking ages, like to the point where I get annoyed with myself. Yeah, um, and I've learned now. To have to create more little habits that help you sleep. Yeah. CBD oil pens also really good for helping you sleep. This is shit I had Griff on, um, and we have it now. My brother this- actually sells it in Ireland. He's like one of the distributors in Ireland. He's going to send us over some like good quality CBD, and he's he's planning on starting right now. He's distributing for another it's company, amazing. but he wants to set up his own company and sell it in Ireland because like it's not illegal to sell CBD oils. No, see, no. So CBD oils are made from the female hemp plants and it's the cannabinoids from these plants that have these amazing anti-carcinogenic properties we've known about them for fucking years everyone's always on, been on about weed for fighting cancer and things like that yeah. we knew they're around uh, i genuinely believe the government fucked up the research of it because the pharmaceutical companies don't want this you know becoming becoming a thing that people medicate themselves with instead of the tablets that they've created i'm big on all that i, I completely agree it's 
um, been a, been held under for a long, long time by the conglomerates. At the end of the day, it's... money makes the world go round. Not healthy human beings. It's money. Yeah. And if something is going to lose the economy, money, like as in if they start selling CBD oils and things like that and promoting them, it's going to look like, yes, it will save probably lives, um, but it's going to cost the economy money. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a disgusting way that the world works, but that's oh, yeah, the way horrible. it works. As, but uh, even as someone who works like it's now, it's and now stuff. it's le- legal. Full weed, full on weed is legal in can- in uh, yeah, LA, in California, states. states alongside California, and it's spreading now throughout. Like yeah. it's becoming more and more and more viable, um, which is great. I to was see. very anti it before, but that was when. I previously went out with a guy who was like, a, like actually a few guys who were huge stoners and I felt it made them lazy. I felt it made them forgetful. They weren't like See, able I to just, converse just, and stuff. And I really disliked the, the drug in general because of how lazy and in See now, cohesive though, people I are. disagree with that because well, I, agree- I think the people who take it that you see taking it like your yeah I'm saying like he was stoners. prior to that already a fucking lazy unathletic bum. No, nobody I know who is an athlete that smokes weed becomes lazy. Yeah. No one. So this this whole thing of no, it making people like, lazy and stuff. I think whatever, it was the whole man. thing of like the fact they were like that, that anyway. People smoking doobies at night, <laughs> like it's not no, but that's what it is. Smoking a doobie and. They'd smoke it and it would make them lazy and chilled out and blah, blah, blah. But it does affect everyone differently. And I think with it being legalized and will it being in like, you're not smoking like a rolly either because I don't like tobacco either. And you're not smoking you're taking the that. Nicotine out of it. You're taking the nicotine out. You're taking in just the property that you need. And and it doesn't have to make you like dozy and it doesn't, because like there are well, no, different no, no. Now types different of it. Strains. Yeah. Hell, no, they've got all, it's been so, and that's why yeah. I'm not as against it as I well, was I'm because... Boring. Because of this, the fact that, like, if they legalise it, I think it'll be better because it'll be non-stoner kind of thing anymore. It'll be more acceptable, just I'm, like having a glass I'm of wine. I'm all in, and I was never a weed smoker. I think I, I, I never did anything. Like, I didn't understand the concept of cocaine because you're shoving something up your nose. It just seemed alien to me. Like, smoking. Yeah. Smoking itself seems weird to me. It's like, because my brain thinks of it like this. You want to take a, something, you want to suck smoke into your lungs... To blow it out again. Yeah. That was how it ended my I'm like, why? What's it what I don't understand. Was it funny that? So it never bothered me. And people were always like, oh, it's just because you, you know, if you try a cigarette, you cough and you think it's bad because of that. And I was like, on a night out, I remember going, uh, no, took a cigarette out of, out of a girl's mouth, put it in, took the biggest, longest, like lungful I could. Why would you do that? Yeah. No, and then blew it out and didn't cough and was like, see, it's just fucking foul. That's yeah, why I don't gross. like it. It was awful. I remember. Do you ever it, actually it take the time horrible. to look at someone smoking and just think, "What are you doing?" Like it's weird, you're isn't actually it? taking smoke willingly, paying someone money to put <laughs> yeah. smoke into an organ that's meant to cleanse your oxygen for use around your body. Like you're literally just literally sucking in poison it's, for every like, cell in your body. It's like taking a really nice sofa and just rubbing oil on it. Yeah. and then expecting it to be okay. It's a weird thing. I understand people get addicted, and I understand different people, like the nicotine or affects the dopamine and everything, and weight. Like some people just get hit harder by things. Yeah. I was watching something the other day. Um, it was a podcast with, oh, it was Fighting the Kid, and they had a guy, and I can't remember his name, but he used to be like a proper junkie. Yeah. And now he's like, oh, damn it. Okay, sorry, if you're watching a video version of this, the uh, memory card filled up. But that's part and parcel of me getting more content out to you guys. I'm fucking filming all the time again now. So mm. I'm running, f- I'm filling up 64 gig cards like it's no tomorrow. Um, so you're talking about the so fighter and the kid. And so the fighter and kid, there's a guy on there. Yeah, he he's now like good looking guy as well. Like, And he, he came out with his age, he was like 40. You look at him, there's no way you think he's like above 32. Like, mm. And he's done like heroin, crap, crazy shit. But uh, he's, a, he's a radio host, I think now, has the podcast. I'll find that guy's name. I can't remember. Um, so anyway, point being, he um, he said when he tried he tried all these different drugs, he he took heroin and was like, that's not for me. Like, could just not take it again. Yeah. Where he said, I was, feel like I could be like that. I don't have a very addictive personality. Because it does come down to people like literally like they try anything and it's like addictive. Yeah. That's true. Um, I don't know. I've never experimented with anything enough the to know. The only thing that I feel like I'm in any way addicted to would be 
um, coffee. That is probably my, my only addiction. And that's because I've built it up over time. Yeah. Like that isn't like, I think if I was just having a coffee a day, it'd be different. Like I, I just really don't feel like I have an addictive personality. You reckon you could just take it or leave it? Yeah, most things. I could probably try it once and just be like, me, And I get cravings like a normal person. I just don't think I get addictions. Uh, I think my mentality of not even wanting to try smoking or anything, like that probably leads to... Um... But you're not big on anything ever, like as in, not like life. I'm just talking about like, you can take or leave alcohol, you can take or leave yeah. anything. Yeah. Like you really like, like like even what I was saying earlier, you could really like a bacon and egg sandwich, but then next week you could be like, yeah, I'm over it now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you really do, like you, you, you go through phases of things rather than addictions. And that's probably why I was never into the weed smoking or heavy yeah. drinking or anything Same like that. Same as me. I've but never, I never got sucked then, into it. Like I stopped drinking at one point completely and it was the third year of uni. I, yeah. did, I stopped. I remember it was because I was sat in a bar um, and it was called Osborne's. Newcastle University I went to. Fucking awesome city. So cool. One of the greatest times of my life. If you're debating going to university now, I'm telling you, Go. Don't worry about the debt. It's not real debt. Fucking go. It's the greatest thing you'll ever do. And if you don't want to go and you really don't, then you, you're solid in your decision. And So, yeah, fair play. But if you're unsure, fucking go. Um, I was sat in a bar in there and it was this one of those nights, you know, they had built-in electronics in the bar. Really lovely bar. So they used to have these like transferable, it wasn't like built-in, but it would fit into the bar somehow. It was this big red buzzer. And on the screens above the bar, they would have this, Thing whizzing back and forth and you'd hit the button and it'd like give you kind of drinks thing. for a pound two for one but you couldn't you know free drinks uh, whatever and i remember we got quite good at hitting like drinks for a pound so we'd order i'd order two vodka and cranberries and ended up hitting two for one so i sat back at my table with these four double vodka cranberries sat in front of me and everyone's like and i'm like i remember sitting there thinking to myself as one of the other lads went back up to the bar here get something Oh, do I want these? It was, it was like fucking midday. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a, a Sunday. It's uni, like. It was like a Sunday or some yeah. shit, yeah. And uh, that was why, because it was midday, it made me think, fuck, do I, I don't want four of these at two in the afternoon. Yeah. And, I remember, and then from that, my brain went, well, why are you drinking them at all, Lex? And I was like, I don't know, brain, why am I? He goes, well, you like the taste of cranberry, don't you? I'm like, yeah, brain, I kind of do like the taste of cranberry. He's like, so you could take the vodka out of that cranberry, couldn't you, and still just drink that, and that'd be why you're drinking it. You're not drinking it for the vodka, are you? And I was like, brain, you have a point. You have a point. Why are we even doing this? And it was literally that, that moment. That's when he realized I that just... alcohol made him talk to himself. So. <laughs> it opened up my brain. <laughs> but that was it. And literally that day, I'd stopped drinking. Literally that day, I just went, I'm done with this. When I was about 16 or 17, that's kind of typical in Ireland and England when kids like really start to like drink together and like, cause you look a bit older. So you were able to buy the booze and stuff like without getting ID'd, you just about pass for 18. <laughs> and um, you just choose the one who looked the oldest to go in and buy the wine. And, um, yeah, that's standard. All but I used, the board, to, I, I used to pretend to be drunk cause I didn't like the taste of any alcohol at the time. And I still, I'm still not that, like, I like cocktails and I like sweet things, but I'm not a big, yeah. but I used to pretend, I, I genuinely, yeah, used to pretend to be drunk and I used to, to pretend in. to smoke to fit in, because, like, otherwise I would, like, I was a bit of a weirdo anyway, so otherwise I would have been completely ostracised, so. Um, That's a good one, actually, in the kids, yeah, doing things and shit to fit in. Uh, I never believed in peer pressure, and now that I look back on it, there was a lot of, but, and I never gave into it. Number one, because I always had the fear of my mom. No, no, I don't think peer pressure, what, do you mean to drink and smoke? Yeah, I think that. It's not like people going, go, do it, do it. But it's the whole thing of trying to fit in. I think people have this confusion that peer pressure is about someone bullying, telling you have to do it. To do but something. it's not. It's just literally peer pressure is being surrounded by everyone doing one thing and wanting to fit in. That's what peer pressure is. It doesn't mean that someone's going, do it, do it, do it. definitely a mentality of getting this, the global kids to do dumb shit. That's yeah. always going to be there. But I, do, I, yeah. I, I had a really nice like bunch of kind of like people that hung around with like guys mostly and girls and we like a nice bunch and no one pressured anyone to do anything but at the same time there was the pressure to be cool general, and know the right gen- music yeah, yeah. and read the right books general and- pressure from society of what's deemed cool at that age so yeah. you need to be involved with it to be you know cool yeah and that's proliferated now with social media i think social media is that new drug for oh, yeah. the younger generation i feel sorry for kids now like teenagers and stuff because Should- i would i would have been ruined i really would i i would have been i don't know i i felt very different anyway growing up and i think it would have made me feel even worse about myself if i'd had social media growing up i'm so glad i didn't because kids are fucking cruel yeah and so you give that an outlet on a social scale that's why they're bad enough anyway without like 
without adding that into oh, the fuck mix. Fuck yeah. It's like giving them like a permanent I think megaphone. about like when we have kids, like what are they going to be exposed to? It kind of scares me. It actually scares me about being a parent. That is one of the things is that you don't have control about what your child is going to be exposed to outside of their home and what what, what they're going to end know. up being. You know when first things all start out, like social media is still relatively young in its in its and where it's going to be in, yeah. in God knows that's what's know, scary years. about so, it yeah though. but in the time that it's going to increase and proliferate it's also going to be much more um, policed and controlled I think as well so now people can't just say what the fuck they want on Twitter without any lawful uh, um, suit coming at them now you can be fucking taken to jail for saying shit on Twitter and threatening yeah. people and things so there's a big step up so I think will come alongside but that thing of genuinely wanting to fit in if you're feeling like that at now I don't think that leads you all the way through to adulthood. There's always that pressure to want to fit into a group and be seen to be popular. Yeah. It's just an, it's in human nature to want to feel like that. Yeah. Um, so if you are feeling a bit like that, actually, you're not alone. Everyone goes through it all the time. Yeah. The, every single person that you look at in a room has had that feeling at some point. It takes a very, very strong person. Like I feel like Lex has taught me a lot in that respect because he's like, I do what I want, not to hurt people around them. I'm just no. saying, you always do what you want because you want to do it under pressure from nobody else. You have your own mindset. And I feel like I want it to be like that, but I was still kind of like, I do what I want and I'm really independent, but I still want to, everyone to like me. I, I'm a people pleaser. Yeah, you're, and you're I in find that torn, it, a torn situation. Yeah, because like I am very independent thinking yeah. and independent minded. And then at the same time, I want See, everyone to like me and I don't like people disliking me. Here's how I think. Like, outward persona of me from, a general, from the general public, I would like to be a non-threatening but um, confident aura. Yeah. Just for someone who's just a glance over you or whatever as they walk past yeah. in the street, you know, it don't, I want to be a shrinking violet, but I don't want to walk around like I've got invisible carpets under my arms because I think I'm a tough man. You know, yeah. And, you know. You don't want to be intimidating. <clears throat> I'm not either either there, here or there on that one. Just, you know, nice outward approachable persona, but also don't rob me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then when it comes to people I know, like on a more closer level and meet for longer periods of time, whatever, not just the person in the street, um, I care what the people I respect think of me. Yeah. But I couldn't give a fuck what the people who I don't like or don't like me think of me. Yeah. I have no concern for them whatsoever. And I didn't always have that, but I definitely got That's that something I definitely after struggle university. With. I got that. I got the, I call it the fuck it attitude. See, and I you, you were teaching me it, a little it. bit more, but I still have the whole thing of, I'm going to do what I want, but then I'm like, mm, but is that going to upset someone? Like even every, like, I feel like it even holds me back of what I really want to say on social media. And even now I'm kind of thinking, oh, is this the wrong thing to be saying on a podcast? Are people going to be second? That- like I am very honest in my Instagram and everything, but I still feel like I'm not like honest to the point of like, I'm always still very aware of not hurting no. anyone or pointing a finger how, no. at anyone. Not and- giving a fuck doesn't mean hurting other people or wanting yeah. to hurt on them. It just basically means you're just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. You have no opinion either way on it because it's not a positive for your life. They're not going to be in your life for long. You don't want them in your yeah. life for whatever reason. Move on. Focus on the people that do. Like the people you want to respect you. Number one, make sure you want them to respect you because you respect them because they're good at what they do or they give you drive or whatever. Um, but yeah, outside of that, that's why. And it's so freeing when you are like that. But yeah. I think that's only part and parcel of growing up and learning through life, like going through uni relationships. Uh, getting shit on, coming back from that, you know, kind of, mm. you have to experience all that, which is why I don't believe in molly coddling the fucking world. Like, I got bullied and was a bully. So, I got both ends of that stick. I mean, I wasn't, a, yeah, I was a fucking, a bully's a bully, it doesn't matter. No, whether the stories was, you've told me, you were physi- a bully, whether, whether it was physical you, or you not, might have I was thought it was funny because you were a kid. Yeah, but. I never hurt anybody, but then yeah. I, I also did some mean shit. But then but like also was, that I've, happened to me in, in return. Yeah. You know, it's just, so the only reason I did it was because it happened to me and it and at the time it was like, oh, now I'm not that kid anymore. Yeah. And so, so that's one thing I've never extremes. spoke about on social media. Um, it's because I'm aware that the girls who bullied me don't even realize that they bully me because yeah. they message me and stuff now and they have no inclination that what they did growing up bullied me to the point where I was kept back a year in school not because I wasn't smart enough because I was like I was smart enough well yeah the job you ended up doing you and um but I think as well that always um that's why I'm always very defensive of my inte- intellect because I feel like people think that because I was kept back a year that I was a little bit slow but it wasn't it was because yeah, I was like I literally that. I literally was kept, well, I, I was kept back and I used to spend my 
my lunch times in with my teacher drinking and I never thought I was being bullied at the time because I I watched a lot of American TV shows and read a lot of American books where the bull someone being bullied was being pushed into a locker or having their head flushed down the toilet stuff. and like or being like like literally name calling but the bullying that I suffered was complete like manipulation and alienation made to feel like you didn't fit in and that's what yeah. bullying is that's the worst and kind. that's the worst kind because you don't understand why and, I, and I it's always, hard to prove and it's it's the fact that I always felt like and I still feel like I'm always outside the circle and that has like been ingrained in me from a child and I think mm. that's really sad because it's something that as a grown up person I still struggle with every day of not being good enough and I think that does have stem from childhood yeah. things but I also think everyone feels like that yeah. in some part of their life right now there's you can talk to everyone and they can give you a scenario right now where in a certain room with certain people, they still feel that way. Yeah. So it never, it's, you're, you're not never wrong. You're going to, to be the best not, person in the room. You're that's not it. wrong in feeling that way because yeah. as we've grown up, that's never gone away. Yeah. So that environment exists just in society, no matter how successful you are, no matter what. So you don't feel like it's the end of the fucking road if that's how you feel in certain things. You only feel like that in that environment. Different environments will make you feel different ways. Yeah. Um, and you just have to learn. I think we live in a world where, like, again, everything's all or nothing. You can't rid the world of that. Yeah. You have to learn to deal with it. Yeah. So, like, we can't be like, we need to stop this. You can never stop it. It's it's a, it's a social mechanism. It's it's not a, 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 a on or off switch. It, it's going to, no matter what happens, you put a number of people in a room, you're going to get this natural segregation and partitioning. Yeah. You're just going to happen. It's, it happens in freaking... You know, just throughout nature, regardless. Yeah, you know, I feel like in social and... environments, I tend to kind of like flip between people because I yeah. don't like being, I don't like being in Cleaky. one particular group to exclude anyone else because I don't like that happening to me. So I feel like I just jump from yeah. one group to the next, yeah. and I know the people that I get I... on well with and I connect with, but like that doesn't mean that I like to, you know, yeah. exclude someone. If or... anything, like those experiences have made me who I am now which I think is a better person yeah. than had I not experienced those things and not had to go through that yeah. and then as I it's made me better as a person thinking about mm. other people as well because I know the people who were in those cliques that stayed in the cliques all the way through schools and like just transferred transferred yeah. transferred they've very yeah. few of them have gone on to do anything great with their lives I just feel like sometimes it's emotionally stinting in a person exactly if, like it's great to have like your friends that you've had your entire life oh, but if, yeah. if you've excluded other people from your life in favour of these original friends what are you actually gaining from life because there's so many amazing people out there that you can learn from yeah. and like I don't have any friends really like that I've had my entire life I just don't I've never really held on to friends but I wouldn't take away from any of the friendships that I've had through the years because each yeah. one, good or bad, has taught me something. Well, your more long-term friends have come as you've got older, haven't they? Yeah, I, like the people who I would consider like my closest friends and the people mm. I go to with problems or whatever are the people who I worked with in Ireland in the lab. And like that was post-uni, like yeah. that was like in my 20s. And that's when I think my personality, they saw me develop as a person and they've remained with me as the person I've become in my 30s. So I think, yeah, for me, like if that's not the same for everyone, but that's how it is for me I and know, the way I've developed as a person. From primary school, which is obviously your pre-teens, yeah. I still know people. And if I had to see them, it'd be like, hey, how are you doing? Yeah. You know, and, uh, But none of them are in my life on a regular basis from yeah. that. Now, secondary school, there are people yeah. who have stuck around from there. But mainly... Um, it's been post uni. People I've met after that again through yeah. like my mid twenties and stuff like that who are still in my life. Um, I think it's you, more strongly than I think people. Others. If you if you think you're not going to change throughout your life, throughout your teens, twenties, and thirties, and that you can't change or that you're limited because of how old you are. That's another thing as well, is that people get to a certain age and they're like, oh, well, what can I do about it now? Like, you know, you're surrounded by people that you may not oh, necessarily yeah. have it's, things in common with. Uh, yeah. It's not about like cutting these people no. off. It's maybe about just like expanding your circle and being like, okay, we're still friends, but I'm going to have other friends and I'm going to do other things. Don't let other people hold you back yeah. from what you want to achieve because they think, oh, we're in our 30s now. We're meant to be getting married, having kids, doing blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but yeah. you're not allowed to be doing, let's say, those, a bodybuilding competition rules. or those like don't apply anymore. sailing a boat round with the world. Yeah. Like, you know, just and do what you want to do. we're fucking lucky we came up yeah. in an era where we don't have to be married and have kids by 24, 23, yeah. which was the thing. Because it's just, I don't, I, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, we don't need to be 
plowing out more humans into the fucking planet you know and it's your choice whether you want to do that don't feel forced into doing it yeah. it's not like we're as a species it's required and um not that we don't want our kids no we're gonna have yeah but we want to live our lives yeah. as well you know and uh, if we want you to enjoy if each some other some people and... don't get me wrong some people want kids early and yeah, if... like yeah Brittany and matt Fucking all they want is it, yeah. like I want to be parents. Brittany said, like, my, one of my friends who I told Brittany was pregnant, she, she was like... natural passion for it. For, first thing my friend Roisin said when I said, oh, Brittany's pregnant, she was like going, oh, Brittany, the girl with the long blonde hair. And she's like, oh, yeah, she was telling me all she wanted to be was a mum. And, like, that was from spending maybe a couple of hours Which with her. Which is lovely to hear, like, yeah. I want to be a mum. Yeah. And, I've uh, never had that, that feeling. But saying that, like, you look at, again, Matt and things like entrepreneurs have lived lived that life you know they've not yeah. been stuck in it but they've done what they wanted and having the kid is what they want to do so and it's still, an extension of their doing life doing what they want yeah. yeah what i'm saying is don't get like you know i'm still massively against like arranged marriages and stuff like that that a lot of my friends uh from like who've been put into arranged marriages it never works out they're always unhappy for fucking years but then there's kids involved you know it, it's tough and i just think now we live in a world that's so the possibilities are so freeing that you, you need to take advantage of that. Yeah. So if you are feeling hemmed in, you shouldn't be. There's so many different avenues of things you can look at. And it's never too late to just go back to fucking ground zero and start over. I've done it twice. I moved back in with my mum twice. Well, you can't say that when it comes to like people with kids and stuff. Because you can't go back to ground zero. You have to be conscious of your major decisions as well. And you need to move with the decisions but, you've listen, made. I'm applying the if common, you're married... I'm applying the common fucking common sense rule yeah. here, okay? What I'm saying is, don't be afraid to try something new and turn away from the shit you hate. You do yeah. not have to be stuck doing what you fucking hate. Listen, it's not going to be easy. No, say, again, fucking you have to learn. Like, we can't just switch things off and go, oh, the world's not fair to you now, let's reset it. No, you still have to factor in your life. Your you've made your decisions, you've, but you've you have made to go them. with them. You have them. to sit by your responsibilities. I'm not saying shirk your responsibilities, but also... Don't be stuck doing one thing you fucking hate for an eternity because you think you have responsibilities yeah. that are dependent on it. Because and it's not always about like quitting your job and moving house. No. It can just be about Starting adding in hobby. something or like getting up an hour earlier to go for a jog before work. You know, setting aside 20 minutes to sit with your kids without phones and televisions on. Like that can yeah. be something. It doesn't have to be something major like I'm quitting my job and I'm moving to no. Australia. It can be something really small yeah. that can just make you and your life better. And like I think just look sitting down and assessing go, your go life. Go buy that fucking model plane you want to learn to fly and yeah. join a fucking model plane club that flies them. Meet new people don't you know just it doesn't have to be something yeah. you know amazingly like inspiration fucking go buy a, a remote control plane it's like and join what a club. i said to lex yesterday i was like i made a new friend at the gym <laughs> and i was like genuinely like happy because like I, i've seen the same girl in the gym all the time and i thought I, I saw her and she was squatting and she had a good squat and i i sat on the hack squat and watched her squat and then she turned around and i was like oh no she's gonna say something to me she's gonna say what the fuck are you looking at and uh, she turned around and she was like hey yeah i've been following your progress on instagram and so we just started chatting and she was asking i was like oh i all see you training and she's like yeah she goes, I love the train and everything, but can't do the diet. Mm -hmm. And like since then, she started commenting on my Instagram, and I've commented back on, hey, we should probably train together sometime, you know? Yeah, and like, right. and it's that simple about making like a new, it doesn't have to be, she doesn't have to be my best friend or anything, but it's just someone that I have something in common with. Yeah. And just making that little, the two of us were a bit like, hey, I've seen you around, <laughs> you know? And that's what some other people can be without being creepy. It yeah. can be nice to just say hi. And you never know what comes from just saying yeah. hey to someone. Like, uh, they a lot of people are as um, reserved in saying hi to you as you are to them. Yeah. So just break the fucking boundaries. Yeah. And yeah. And so what did that all spiral from? As weed smoking, not smoking weed oh, as a I don't kid. Know. There we go. Not oh, smoking uh, weed. Oh, we were talking about our time scales because you. Oh yeah, we never got back onto the sleeping thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And the, and the weed thing as well. So yeah. No, what I wanted to say was because just to circle back to the the can cannabis oil things because I know people ask me about that when I had. Um, Griff, the family dog, who was obviously given like three months to live, and I got him. We then changed his diet and put him on cannabis oil, and he lived for like another year, and yeah. actually just went from old age. He had to be put down. A video of that went up. Sorry for making some of you cry on that, but <laughs> he had a great time and a great life because of that. So I'm massively never been into anything like cannabis or anything like that, but massively in favour of it being legalised. And then that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. So with the alcohol thing, I went to total at uni. But then actually started drinking red wine again when I read the medical studies that have been released about how it can reduce um, the risk of heart disease, prostate, cancer, and in all moderation, this. In moderation, I'd like to point in, out. In, in men. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something like having three or four glasses of red wine a week 
helped reduce these things Probably. massively. Yeah. And then I, so I started drinking red wine again. Yeah. So I literally, if the science is there, I'll go with it. I have no fear of going with it. So the science is there now with, you know, we've got so much more access to information about weed and things like that, that now knowing it's going to benefit me, um, I will smoke weed. Whereas before I just used to see it as, you know, a, like you said, a drug. Yeah. So as soon as it's like that, that advantage towards I think it, it is the perception that um, people put out there of being a stoner because there is a huge difference and that's what I think that's what needs to change is the perception of what it's not weed it's CBD and it's therapeutic it's not yeah. this hey let's sit and get stoned and eat brownies and you know laugh yeah. at stupid things it's like no. something more if you look at it more therapeutic then on that level and, I agree with it and there's also now that choice like you can have the benefits of what weed provides without the high yeah because they take out is it the THC that's removed from it or from the female hemp plants is it's they yeah. they're, uh, they're the ones they don't, either they don't have the THC in them or they they have the THC is not is, is removed anyway um and the cannabinoids are what are important and so that's 100 percent, guys if you have um anxiety sleeping issues um appetite issues joint pain this is all things cbd oil can really help you with and i fucking firmly believe in it mm. um if we do come across somebody help is supplying it in uk um we'll fucking get behind somebody on that and help you guys get access to it hopefully with Maybe some kind help of Daniel out with that. a discount for it or something yeah we'll try and do that for you so um let us know if that's something you'd be interested in um where we're we going with that after that we went sleep cycles didn't we so yes um so that's my sleep cycles suck like i'm, I'm night owl yeah. struggle to wake always up always has been always always have been and that's even, a big thing that even, it does come from your childhood even though i have set myself i used, i had a point where i used to go to bed at 11 o'clock wake up at seven o'clock and i did it f- for a while and it literally took me two days to fall out of that rhythm mm. and straight back into just being a night owl because it's not my I nature. I really enjoy us being up at... Like I, I said to Lex, I enjoy the first hour of the day when I'm on my own in the house and I have my cuddles with the dogs and I have my coffee and I have my sit down and I read my, my Instagram messages, things like that. And I just have like that little bit of quiet time in the morning to myself. And like I feel like he has that in the evening when I go to bed. But at the same time, I don't like it being this... Instead of it being an hour, I don't like it being more than an hour. I don't yeah. like to be up for four hours and then going to bed four hours. Yeah. Because right now we're getting closer to the four hours than we were. Yeah, so that's that's uh, just because I've had the much more on my plate with this, with, you know, all the YouTube bullshit and um, and then dedicating myself to this new content. But I'm getting better. You just I'm have to get up earlier and get your work done in the morning. Yeah. Thing is, I find out like if I get up earlier, by the time it's 11 o'clock, I st- same amount of work's fucking been done. Oh no! <laughs> you just have to get into the cycle. It's because you're getting up and having like ah oh, chill out time. I get up and I start. I have chill out time going. for a half hour and then I get going. I have my videos edited before you. See, that's up the trick. The it's not just set myself the, the getting no, up early. I then have, have to, to set myself set... that get to work. And early then yeah, well, yeah, you have to like set it that it's a work environment that you start work and then like. That's why I have my, my breakfast at midday as well. That's where intermittent fasting comes into it for me because I have my I have to have a certain amount of work done before I have my breakfast. So, that's where that so I have this like schedule yeah. boom. That's where that benefits your yeah. your style. Intermittent fasting does not work for me because I forget to eat meals at certain times and then I can't fit it in in the time slots. Yeah. So I end up like binging towards the back end of the time slot and yeah. just feel like shit. So it didn't work for me. Yeah, um, it's not for everyone. I enjoy it. But I looked into why this was. I was like, am I am I just a fucking weirdo that likes being up at night? Am I? Um, I just remember one time reading about um, what's the guy who did uh, Kill Bill, the director. He's really good, but now Quentin he's fallen Tarantino. off. Quentin Tarantino. He was he was a guy. I always used to say he would work best at night, and he'd always stay up till two or three in the morning and wake up at eleven or twelve every day. That was his routine. So I remember reading that and thinking oh, well, he's a successful guy. I'm not fucked. It's just like this thing. <laughs> yeah. No, but do you know what it made No me one feel... wants to have the goal in life to be like Quentin Tarantino. No, but I mean, huge success though. You can't yeah. deny that. And, and a genius. Yeah. And he... Um, a very strange person. Yeah, but they always are the best, aren't they? And um, so I just remember thinking like, because it, it was all that thing of, am I the only one? And the moment you find out you're not, you're like, ah, okay, now you feel a bit more relaxed about it. But it turns out I researched recently. They have since found out, I think it was only in the last year, your circadian rhythm, there's a mutation in one of the genes that can fuck up your circadian rhythm so that your timeline for each day is longer than 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Your wake cycle, or well, sleep and wake cycle, is longer than 24 hours. So you're always an hour over every time. Yeah. So you're 
in a forever catch up period, which is why sometimes I can go to bed at 11 o'clock, go to sleep, 12 o'clock. And then a couple of nights later, I'm four in the morning because I'm just not tired. And it's this just tick, 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 tick. From I'm tired when you right get it now. Back in. <laughs> I can see you yawning away. To be honest, I don't know why I'm tired because the last two nights I've had decent night's sleep. And I swear it's just the onslaught of peak week again from last week because I was waking up super early. And yeah, I, you were. I feel like last night I had probably more than eight hours sleep and I'm just like I've got like you know like scratchy tired eyes and like all I'm thinking is oh my god we have to be up like out the door at half six in the morning not even up we have to be out the door at half six tomorrow morning see look I'm even thinking yeah you're thinking oh god I know that I literally sat last night I thought well I've got a lot of editing to do before I go I was like I might just not sleep no you're not allowed to do that because then we go on holidays and you're a fucking crank for three days (laughs) and I'm just sitting there going Thank you. I know, no, I decided against it, but easily I could just do that. See, my so thing easy. would be you like, be I'm going to bed at eight o'clock because I have to be up at half five. Yeah. <laughs> we just start, start this video so we don't have the issue with it clunking out on it. But my thing is that I wake up super early and I was telling Lex how um, when I was younger, I don't know if anyone else like this because none of the rest of my sisters were, but when I was younger at the weekends, we were just talking yesterday about how, oh, weren't they the best cartoons on a su- Saturday and Sunday morning? And I was like, particularly, because I came from a big family, it was like four girls in my family growing up, and um, you never got any time on your own if you're in and about the same age, like there was only a couple of years between all of us, four girls, you never got alone time. You always, like at one point I set up camp in the lounge and had a camp bed and a box full of my clothes because yes. I didn't want to be, I you shared a room with my two. a weird kid. I, no, actually I bet you weren't. No, I no, think I that's kind of normal. I grew up, I was the middle child I and. I did the same thing. I was the middle child and I had to share a room with two other girls and I flipping well hasted. I just yeah. wanted some time on my own. And I think you're kind of the same as well because you came from a big family. We're both like, sometimes we just say, oh, I hate people. Sometimes I just do like yeah, it's the just science like I want, of my I own just, company. Like me and Lex will sometimes very happily sit in different lounges and just sit, work away. And we just like, we like our quiet time. And that's why when we're looking for a house, we need to have loads of living space. I think, I think we, it's healthy to be able yeah. to sit on your own for a little bit. I think if you crave I constant, like being on my own. constant companionship for the people, there's going to be moments in life where you, you don't have anyone around you yeah. that you know, like, and you, you, it's going to stress you the fuck out. Yeah. But I used to wake up super early on a Sunday. Like, I'm talking like maybe four or five in the morning. It's still dark You're like out. Tom. Tom, my yeah. cousin. He's the same. Yeah, but he still does that. He's a weirdo. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I used to have this whole thing where I'd like really, because like all the doors were squeaky obviously in the house and you'd have to like really slowly open the kitchen door because you'd go through the kitchen into the lounge in my house and I'd go in and I'd have the volume of, you know, the TVs, like the old school TVs and it'd have like up one notch on it. I'd sit this close to the TV (laughs) with my bowl of rice krispies and just sit and watch TV by myself and it was the only time I ever had on my own and then everyone would get up and I'd be like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> and I just like yeah, my eyes just go. I just remember always wanting to get up early as a kid to like Christmas morning or mornings when you were like staying with your granddad. Yeah. Every time I got up and I'd be like, yes, creeping downstairs, thinking I'd beat everyone up. Tom would already be up. Yeah. He'd be chilling out, having some toast, watching TV, and he'd been up like an hour. I'd be like, damn it. Yeah. No, I was never, always. Never I used to get in it. trouble for it though. I used to be sent back to bed if my mum caught me. I'd be sent back to bed. But I hated going back to bed <laughs> in the morning. I just wanted to be. I, I, I like going to bed early at night and I like getting up early in the morning. But even now, yesterday, I walked out the door and left my phone on top of the radiator. And it wasn't until about a half an hour later, I was in TK Maxx buying stuff. And I was like, went to pay and I was going to pay on my, my phone, my Apple yeah. Pay. And I was like, oh, I don't have my phone. And I checked my watch and my watch is obviously connected to my phone. And it was like saying that it was out of range. And I was like, well, it's not even in the car then. I must have left it at home. And I was like going to the gym and I was like, shit, number one, I'm going to have to go to the gym with no, no phone, music. no music. And I went, I was going for, um, to Starbucks before the gym for my pre-workout coffee. And I was like, oh my God. What I'm are going to look at? Yeah, because normally I sit on my phone and scroll through yeah. Instagram. So I went, uh, bought myself a magazine and I went to Starbucks and I had my coffee. And you know what? I spent more time in Starbucks than I normally do. I spent 45 minutes and I was like, I couldn't text Lex, couldn't do anything. So I was just like... And I had a really nice time. And I had a really good workout in the gym. I would know they had decent music playing, so it was okay in the gym. And I even did HIIT training without anything no, to entertain myself. Sick. And I got home, but I'd had like, what, like three or four hours of no 
no contacts with anyone else, no social media, no nothing. And it was so nice. I felt really good when I got home. I don't know. It was like a little bit of a detox, three hour detox. We should probably all do that. Yeah, they say about digital detoxes. Yeah, you should probably step away one day, just take an afternoon off from everything. Go get a book. I did it accidentally. Sit with a coffee, get a book. And just detach from the I've digital downloaded world. a load of books for our holiday. That, can you detach from the digital world reading on a Kindle? Does that count? Well, like, there's no, it's not social media. Mm. Anyway, it's still, if, you, if you can't go to... How is that not? It's just a book. <laughs> it's still electronic, isn't it? Yeah, but it's still a book. It's just like a lighter book. It's literally just a book, a Kindle. Like, you don't get anything else from it. Yeah, but the feeling of a page turning, all that, proper reconnecting. Yeah, if you want to bring six books in your baggage instead of one Kindle. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, for holidays. I mean, for, you, for your one week, one afternoon off detox. That oh, we said no, to I do. got a magazine. I'm going to do that then, because I never do that. I'm going to take an afternoon off at some point. I'm going to find my leave your phone. And do that. The only problem with leaving my phone is music in the gym. I need music, my own music in the gym. Mm. And I don't have an iPod anymore for obvious reasons. Yeah. I don't need one. Um, but right so but the point being here is looking to the circadian rhythm thing maybe you like me have the weird mutant gene we're mutants we're actually cool if we have it we're just shit because we don't get any powers well we do I no, feel like Lex no, lives do up to it now because he's decided he has this mutant gyms <laughs> and he's just like using it as an excuse I have the power to stay up I'd love for late. him to get genetically tested now to see if he does and then when he's told no you're just a weirdo who stays up late <laughs> No, I think that is there's no, far there's more There's no likely. way around it because it's been since I was a child. But anyway, if you if you like me, that's why it is. So what we have to do is actively make ourselves go to bed at a set time. It doesn't matter whether you feel tired tired or not. We just have to get in that rhythm of going at a certain time. That one time I slept in when Lex was away. I slept in until midday. I got up and I cried because I was so upset that because I slept midday. Like me asleep in is normally like latest ten o'clock. No man has ever said that sentence in his life. I cried because I slept in until <laughs> after midday. I slept in so late, so I cried. I cried, and then Roxy oh puked God. on the floor because she was obviously barking so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up and I was like, this is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> slept till 12 I was like oh my, up. my day I cried oh, my day was like completely ruined by it <laughs> I can't blame any of it on Lex he's not here yeah so they yeah you're not alone people so you're not alone those circles where you feel alone the nights you can't go to sleep you are not the only ones and I know for a lot of people that will help you because it makes you feel a little bit more normal when you might have got so built up in your own head that you felt like you were some kind of oddity. You're not. But like there's so many things that like you feel so weird about. Like I was talking about bullying and feeling like outside the circle. That is completely normal. Yeah. It's just you feel weird because no one else is sitting there talking about it. And it's also a very, what's the word for it? Um, enclosed environment in those things like schools, all this. It's, it's very, very tight knit. And obviously as you get older, that that boundary that you have on your life just exponentially expands if you allow it to I don't know so I think can... I found it even when I worked in like no I'm saying it's still there but yeah, it's, it's, it's even different. more concentrated when you're in that school level where you've not got a lot of life experience yet and your life experience is this situation yeah. so it has that much weighs, I think if there it weighs is anyone, that much heavier on you if there's because people of who are like 16 or 17 that are listening to us and you're going through a shit time Talk to people. You, no, but you just, Why? Like, you're going to look back on it when you're 30 and it's going to be so insignificant even though it's your life like I said yeah. right now when you're in your 30s, other shit will come up and like will Not be the 30s, same. 30s, 20s. Yeah, the, anything. Like even in a year's time, moment, you're going to look back and be like, no. that was so silly. No, no, not that. You, it will only become a big thing in your life if right now you let it. Yeah. If you allow this to be, if you allow this to define you, mm. it will. But if you just move on, fuck it. Yeah. Just fuck it. Hashtag, I would like that's a hashtag today yeah. hashtag fuck it but I've got to move on because we're coming towards the end of this now I said we go through some of your Twitter tweets tweeted we haven't even gone through my subject we'll have to do it next week oh what was yours yes oh no we didn't we didn't even get onto what we thought we were going to talk about today yeah. which we'll talk about be, it next week because that's a good subject what was it I don't want to spoil it for no everyone. really uh, it's going, I'm going to talk about um, kind of gender uh, kind of like anti-feminism has feminism oh, has gone, gone too, too far? far to the point where you cannot do something nice for your husband or you cannot do or a, a or like yeah or that you can't that it's become that gender specific um it's, well, it's an extremism it's an, just yeah. it's taken a good point that's gone to an extremist level now yeah. with certain people because again social media like has it, so that's what has we're it got cover. to the point yeah, yeah where if you do something for your like a, a 
Uh, it's got so far that now you can't do anything without it being yeah. something which in Like making Lex a meal problem. or a sandwich, I'm like, oh, he should just do it himself. I'm like, yeah. yeah. So we'll talk know. about that next well, week. We're going to talk about that in more detail next week. Good one. Yeah, it will be a good one. Yeah. Okay, um, let's have a look. So, the Twitter things. Right, I immediately I noticed one down the list here. Um, transitioning in and out of a diet as far as macros. You can't ask that. I don't know how many times you have to say this. If you're doing macros, you should know this by now. They're specific to you for a transitional period. Like you can have general macros for a certain idea, like I'm doing with the seven-day diet. I can give you guys general depletion macros and general loading macros, but I can't give you them specifically for a long-term goal. It doesn't work like that. It's got to be tailored to you. So you can't message someone and just say, what should my macros be for this? Like it's it's not just a plug-in, plug-out number system. Um you can get averages online easily enough. But um, yeah, don't ask that question because it's unanswerable. It's the same um, just do more research on your macros and things. And here's what was so once benefits of massages and chiropractic treatments. Well, we I'm get massage anti- regularly now. Yeah, we get massage like every second week. Yeah. And it's definitely beneficial to us. Because like sometimes you don't even realize. Like last time I was getting her to do my legs and I was like, actually, can you do some of my back? And oh, Lex thinks it's hilarious because I like it was so painful and I didn't feel like I had any tension in my back or shoulders. And when she started massaging into it, oh my god, it was so painful. Yep. So it and, like, you it, it, like it, it makes you realize that there's a lot of stuff going on in your body, especially when you're training regularly, that you don't even realize that could go from being a little bit of a twinge to an injury very quickly. So it kind of keeps on top of those things. And we're talking about sports massage here. So if something does like feel tight or anything like that. Uh, uh, masseuse can pinpoint where it's coming from. Yeah. So we're not talking about Swedish massage where you just no, like, no. like she listen makes me to cry. the plinky plonky music. It's not no. that. It's like, where does it hurt here? <clears throat> Get in. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think it's as beneficial as stretching. Yeah, definitely. Like it's easily as beneficial as that and we should all be stretching and we don't do that enough. So I'm no, pretty I much sure not, we I'm don't terrible. get massaged enough. And I know it can be a luxury expense for a lot of people to do things like that. So I would advise if you don't or can't get massaged on a regular basis, buy yourself a foam roller. Yeah. They're cheap. You can get them on Amazon for next to nothing and foam roll yourself. A squash ball. And get your, yeah, get yourself a little, um, yeah, the, the different levels of squash ball, like how hard they are. Get some of those to help pinpoint some, uh, some areas and help loosen those off. So foam roller and a squash ball, and you can do a lot to help benefit yourself from that. Um, so that's a good one, yes. Uh, the chiropractic side of it, we've only just had it done. I've had about four times. I don't agree with it. And I thought it was awesome. Like It, it, in, it instantly helped me um, release my shoulder when it was all twinged up. Definitely. Instant, instantly felt better. Less pain and more mobility. But um, the thing with it is you 1,000% need it done on a more regular basis than massage. Mm. It has to be consistent week to week, week to week. Otherwise, whatever it was that was tightening up will re-tighten up, especially... Uh, you have to be rehabbing alongside to stop it tightening back up. You have to be healing. It doesn't heal what's wrong. What it does is help um, reduce the tension so that you can then rehab better. Mm. So that's that's my idea on those ones. Um, what else we got on here? In, so again, asking about it, importance of mobility, exercise examples. It's a podcast. I can't do an exercise example on a podcast. Yeah. Um, mobility is massively important. I think it, people who are watching this, when we put out the tweet saying what you want to talk about, remember that like most of the subjects that we're covering here are not really fitness specific. Life specific. They're life. And so like... If you have a real we, problem right now. Yeah. Like, like we can do videos on these subjects in our like vlogs because they're fitness have. and we have done videos and we can do them again if they want them. But like for the, the, um, the podcast, it'd be nice to get some more you know, lifestyle kind of yeah. motivational <laughs> chat. This one, someone's saying how to make the rhubarb compote. I love the way they put it on actually, your Twitter actually, as if Lex yeah. even knows. You could say how to, how to make the rhubarb compote. And this is the one that I show you in the seven day transformation that I put on top of my yogurt and fruit in the morning. And I don't even need to log it because it's that low. It's made from rhubarb and blackberries. Yep. 
You see, he doesn't even know. <laughs> he doesn't actually know. It's like, yeah, it is rhubarb blackberries, and you usually add a sweetener of choice. If you want to add in honey or like actual proper sugar, you can, but I usually use a sweetener. And I normally add in a couple of teaspoons of cinnamon, which is also beneficial. It's an antioxidant. And I usually add in about a teaspoon of lemon, and you just heat it up quite slowly on a low heat and just keep watching until it gets to the consistency you want because it literally will just go to mulch but you just can't let it burn and what ratio you don't of re- rhubarb to blackberry do you use i usually just use or rough a, weight. i don't know it's just literally whatever portion you get from um like the supermarket it'd yeah. be probably about five stalks of long rhubarb and then usually a punnet of blackberries but like you can mix it up you can add in whatever you want you can add blueberries flows frozen berries are completely okay as well yeah. i use frozen blackberries a lot as they well they might actually be better if you want a less bitty consistency because yeah. the frozen ones do reduce down way faster yeah and they add you don't need the thing is you don't need water even though you think you need if you want to add a little like a thimble full of water do but i usually just use a little bit of uh, lemon juice as i said just as the kind of and that kind of cuts through the bitterness of the um rhubarb and they just i know how it, is it works tart, though. but it is tart yeah. you usually put it on something that is going to be sweet like fruit and it helps just give you that kind of bittersweet yeah I'm, I'm not a fan of rhubarb unfortunately i, I don't hate it like, i used to hate it when Bit I of ruby, ruby crumble do you Ooh. did you like gooseberries growing yeah up? See, oh, oh my I god it. i hate it can we get those here i don't know you get them i like we oh, used to grow gooseberry yogurt. and we go to oh, my mom's house god, she has gooseberry it. bushes and rhubarb in the garden oh my god get the suitcases ready oh Oh, I love As we Goosebury. go to Ireland the week after oh. Lift Brum. Yes, we're doing some travelling. Yeah. We're doing some travelling. Um, I think here's, I'm going to finish on um, Dan Peacock because you've got a cool last name and you've started your comment with Sounds Weird, so it's hopefully going to be something fun. Sounds weird, but as a pasty white boy with the complexion of Casper, the socially awkward ghost, <laughs> do you have any tips on getting a half-decent tan? Dude. Oh, he's the wrong person to ask. Dude, he's half Cypriot. I, I tan in a day in the UK, yeah. so I don't feel your pain. Look at, look at, this is me. I'm post competition and still have a good residue of the, like, a whole bottle of bodybuilding <laughs> tan on me, and he's still darker than me. Yeah. And I actually look, um, I turn the white balance up on videos, so we often look a bit paler than we are in real life. Um, uh, but um, here's I'm the very... thing, dude. If you don't tan, you don't tan. It yeah. doesn't fucking matter. It, 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 just don't try to outdo your own nature like if you do tan eventually then to get a half decent tan um you're gonna have to spend some time under the sun for starters um use like a factor 15 so it's low but still protective but on top of the factor 15 maybe get an oil-based one like the no. carrot the carrot Dude, oil based don't tan mind 15. legs Listen, no, this is legit. You can get a carrot oil, carrot I'm not talking about thing. that. I'm just saying, embrace your paleness. Who cares if you're No, pale? I was getting to that. If you let me go around. But if he does tan, we have to cover that. But you tan only a little bit. You have to take in and out, like short stints in the sun and out so you don't burn. If you burn, you're not going to tan. You're going to peel. Um, I'd be very careful. I would I'd be moisturize. I'd be factor 30. I'd like to find out for 50 on my face. In UK, though, 15 is fine if it's a sunny day. It's not going to get that hot. If you're abroad, Just be careful. get up to 30 on your shoulders. UV your damage face. is, you cannot undo it. That's what I'm saying, yeah. If you if you don't tan, it basically means you're, you're, uh, you've are you're got a lack of, is it melan, melanonin? Melanin. Melatonin? Melanin. Melanin. Yeah, melatonin is the sleepy hormone. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so melanin. It means you, just, I mean, you don't have a lot running through your body, and that means that you can't deal with the sun's rays, the UV. You can't, can't, you don't produce the melanin to deal with it. So you have to be not in the sun as long as other people who can, or wear a factor that helps you. You can always get those moisturizers as well that have the built-in tanners. Well, yeah, that's a good one. But yeah, so one is just, you know, be careful in the sun not to burn, and that'll help you get a better color over time. Two, moisturize to keep your skin healthy and keep hold of any tan you do get. Mm. Blokes should be moisturizing anyway. Get a bit Metro, dudes. It's 2018. I tell you what, there's nothing more unattractive on a man than having what I have right now, which is tan hands. Oh, if you're going to do the fake tan root, guys, just do a good job of it and wash those hands. You do not want to be like a 17-year-old girl going to a disco. <laughs> With the tan hand. Yeah, like I like mine are destroyed right now and I didn't even get tanned on my hands. That's tangoed, just... tangoed mitts. And Nobody I hate that. There's mitt. nothing worse than the fake tan hands. I just don't tan my hands. <laughs> I prefer to have just like white hands. But the other thing was your, your tanning moisturizers. There's one by Johnson, which um, is really good. I use the Palmer's butter one. Palmer, you know, the... Does it um, tangle your hands, though? 
It's the same as Annie's rest of them. You still have to wash your hands after them. There you go. But it smells good, that one, the palm. Yeah, the Johnson smells one like smells more, like fake tan. Yeah, it smells more like coconut, and it's really, really subtle. You can just put it on after the shower, and it gives you a nice... It kind of builds up your own natural colouring, so rather than giving you a fake tan on top of white skin, it'll kind of bring out what colour you would be naturally. I think it's the nicest one for pale skin. But you still be careful about streaking and everything. Not as in run around naked, as in streaks <laughs> from the tan. <laughs> But more confidence in running around naked if you're moisturised and looking Not weird. if you've got streaks. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, well, I think that's it. But, yeah, other than that, dude, it fucking doesn't matter. Yeah. Just be in shape. Boost your confidence that way. Concentrate on your shape, how you look in the mirror. Make yourself feel better that way. You don't need a tan. Think of it this way. If you go to China, people think you're rich. Yeah. It's China, it, isn't it? Yeah, they be see so a, careful. They see a tan it, as being like a A lot of thing. Asian countries like um, Singapore, all over that side of the world... They like they want to get rid of their tan skin, so they have a lot of. If you buy moisturizer or anything, they have bleaching agents in them. What? Yeah, like you have to be so careful about buying like really? face moisturizer. Yeah, they all have bleach in them to take the color out of their skin. No, how yeah. is that legal? It's like you can buy it online, easy. It's sick because I was going to get it just to get rid of my freckles because it'll literally take them off your skin. No, don't do that. Mm. I like your freckles. I, I, I yeah. Um, talking about pale skin I'm like accept yourself and I'm like I hate, yeah, I hate my face I don't mind if I just have them here it's just, it's just like they're <laughs> everywhere uh, Jesus yeah no they uh, in, in those in is it China, is it China and yeah, Singapore and all that they see a tan as being a sign of being poor because it was what the workers in the, the rice, rice fields, fields yeah. would end up having tans and obviously the rich would be inside more and would have paler skin hence they're why they walk around with umbrellas in the sunshine yeah. crazy crazy madness Anyway, I love it. I love a tan, but I also appreciate a pale body. He so married a pale don't, body. Don't worry, Peacock. We we still like you. Yeah. Peacock it around with your abs instead of your tan. I'm hoping that our kids <laughs> will have like your tan skin with a few freckles. Yeah, well, pale skin should be recessive, so it should be dominant. Just like brown is dominant. I'd like to point out that I'm the tanned colors. one in my family. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm the darkest. Actually, yes, it's all very freckly. Because my cousins uh, on my dad's side, they're all quite... Could you be more Irish? <laughs> my cousins. <laughs> Little freckly gingers running around. Hey, I've got like loads of freckly ginger <laughs> kids at home. My nephews are right. gorgeous with their let's, freckles and their ginger they are, hair. They do look cool right now. Um, let's wrap it up. Okie dokie. Later, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anything else we need to say before we, we tell off? I think that's everything. No, but come and comment on our come Instagram say- tonight about about your thoughts on feminism. No, balls. Just <laughs> come and comment below this, anything you want us to talk about. Um, no, I want to know what people's feedback is just so that we can have a discussion about it. We'll put it in discussion. the comment section yeah. here. Yeah, let yeah. us know what you think about the subject and any of the ones you would like us to cover in the future. Crewcast every Monday, videos this week. Now, there will be one hopefully up tomorrow, Tuesdays. Normally I do Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. Um, we are in Turkey. The internet there is probably worse than it is here even when the squirrels have chewed the yeah, lines. Yeah, and we don't even have the access to our phone to even so, use yeah, our phone. Yeah, we don't have that. So there may be a lack of updates um, until I'm preloading videos. Monday. I'll be editing them while I'm out there, but we might not be able to get them uploaded until yeah. the Sunday night when we're back. I'm going to have one preloaded. I'm going to have... I'm, I'm putting one up tonight. Yeah. And then I'm, put, I'm preloading one for Thursday. So if you need something, i bikini try-on video, um, to <laughs> yeah, keep guys. you going... <laughs> I've got like about eight bikinis as well. There's loads. So if you if you want to watch something a bit Lex and Laney and you're feeling deprived. Or if you're um, feeling just a bit alone and you've got some some spare moisturizer and a Kleenex. Kleenex. <laughs> no, you're not going to Oh, that is why I'm finishing the podcast. Oh, no, why? <laughs> <laughs> Go follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all the fun, all the links will be in the description below. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been the Monday Crew Cars. We will catch you in the next one. Boom, baby!